And here we go. Welcome everybody to Big Idea. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Hanna, and we had a question on YouTube, and I think this is a really good question. The question is, at what point do you think that surgery of the spine is going to be necessary, and it's not appropriate to be doing the normal conservative measures anymore? So I want to jump into this, and as a brief overview, we're going to hit on four categories of conditions. So the first one is if you're dealing with unstable fractures. Number two is if you're dealing with unstable ligaments. Number three are certain kinds of neurological symptoms, even if you're not dealing with fracture dislocation, that's like, okay, no, you start experiencing these, that means you need surgery pretty much right away. It's a medical emergency. And then the fourth one, this is when you have exhausted all of the normal types of conservative options. So let's jump into this, have a look at these one at a time. All right, first thing that I want to hit on are the potential for fractures. Not all fractures are going to be the same, but anytime that we would be suspecting the possibility of fracture, CT scan is essential to be able to differentiate, is the best way to see what's going on. X-ray, good CT, way, way better. And what I have here would be an illustration of the spine, kind of in a nutshell, where the little black squares here, these essentially would be vertebral bodies. This would be the back part, the, the tips of the vertebra. The purple that we have here, this would be the equivalent of the, the discs, so the shock absorbers in between. And then in the blue here, this would represent spinal cord and each of the, the nerves. So we see that essentially the, the spine is a, a conduit for the electrical wires that go between your brain and your body to all of your muscles, organs, all that sort of stuff. So I want to make a, a bit of distinction first between a stable versus an unstable fracture. So here would be an example of a stable fracture. This would be the case where what we have is an injury that's essentially clipped off one of the, the tips on the, the back of the vertebra there where all the muscles are going to be attaching. Now, this can still produce a whole bunch of pain, but this is the caveat and the point of distinction, is with that kind of a fracture, you're not going to be having where part of the bone is going to infiltrate into the neural canal. In other words, it's not going to be affecting the spinal cord itself. It's when you have fractures that are going to affect the spinal cord, that's where we're talking about unstable and potentially dangerous. And there's got to be like emergency surgical intervention usually at that point. This here would be another example of a relatively stable fracture, but still nothing to, you know, just slough off. This is going to happen if you have either an axial compression. So imagine if you would diving headfirst into a pool, smashing your head on the bottom, or a compression fracture that can happen in a high-speed car accident where the spine gets snapped forward like this. It can also happen if people have osteoporosis where the bone is so weak it can't support the normal load and the body itself begins to collapse on the front element like this. Now these again, these are not good. You got to keep an eye on these. But as a general rule, as long as the back elements are still intact, same thing. That's not going to be shifting into the canal and it's not going to be that imminent danger where we've got to do like emergency surgery. Now it's this kind of a fracture. This is the one where we need almost immediate surgical intervention because what you see, the way that this one has cut through, it's allowed for part of the bone to start to shift backward and it's going to have that potential to be affecting the spine. This is not something where conservative management is the, the time and place. No, this is the time and place where we need to get the surgeon involved pretty much right away because you can see that as it starts to abut or starts to impinge the cord, this is where you're starting to deal with truly life-disrupting issues it can result in paralysis, lock, loss of a complete body function, organ function, things like that. This is not the stuff to be messing around with. And an important note, this can actually happen at any level of the spine, all the way from C1 all the way down to your tailbone at the L5 and at the level of the sacrum. If I grabbed a little model here like this, so this would be one of the, the top of the neck, C1, C2. So essentially your spinal cord is living in this space right here. So that concept that I'll illustrate like this, maybe a little bit more, but anything where the spine should normally be sitting here, 
that allows for those things to go backward way more than just a tiny little injury, but starts to affect the nerves themselves directly where there is physical compression. This is where we require surgical intervention all at once. Now there's a second category of injury that also needs a, a little bit of a deeper dive here. These are gonna be ligament tears. Ligaments are the things that actually hold the bones in place. So you don't necessarily have to break the bone, but if you damage the structures that hold them where they're supposed to be, you can have that same kind of sliding factor occur. And ligament injuries can happen up to three levels. So the black here would represent either the, the length or the width of a ligament, depending what it's supposed to do. And these giant spikes like this would represent essentially where you have a tear. I'm actually gonna make a little change on that number right there. There we go, so this is gonna be more accurate. So a grade one tear, general rule, these are stable. This is where you have up to about a third of those little fibers that stretch or tear a little bit. Body can usually compensate for these. And this is where conservative care, chiropractic, physical therapy, massage, acupuncture, all of these things can help because body's designed to heal itself. Now, if you tear up to two thirds of it, body can still manage, but suddenly things are moving way too much and you're starting to develop a condition that's known as instability. Depending on the exact location, sometimes you can still manage these conservatively, but this is the point where we're thinking, ooh, if you're not responding, we might need to up the ante to surgery to provide that additional stability where we are starting to lose it. If, of course, you have a tear beyond two-thirds or even a full rupture, this is where it's going to require surgery to actually pin the things back together because otherwise things have excessive mobility. And again, if we're talking about a spine issue there, that's where you might need the fusions, the screws, because the consequences, as bad as those kinds of surgeries can be, the consequences unfortunately would be so terribly much worse. And I need to hit on an important point right here because very often when people have gone to the emergency department, they've done CT scans, maybe MRIs, things like that, and they're told we don't see any signs of pathology, there's no broken bones, no dislocations, no nothing like that, that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is fine because what they are looking for, they are looking for the type 2 or the type 3 ligament injuries or the broken bones with instabilities. They're not regarding those grade one injuries, oftentimes because they happen on a much smaller scale. But make no mistake, even though they would be much smaller, they can still be producing a lot of clinical issues. So just because, and you always want to rule out fractures, dislocations, instabilities, things like that. You've got to rule that out first if you have the concern about that. But just because the radiology report might come back saying, nope, you're not dealing with the imminent, severe, dangerous conditions, does not mean that you're having issues that are not significant. Grade one injuries clinically are very, very significant. And that's the different viewpoint in terms of what we look at, at least from the, the chiropractic standpoint, Yes, we want to rule out the grade twos and the grade threes, but we're looking at the grade ones. And this is the, the realm where there's a time and a place for medicine, there's a time and a place for surgery, but there's also a time and a place for chiropractic, physical therapy, rehabilitation, and all of these other things to help enhance and improve body function before it gets to that point of overt crisis. Now the third piece. This is where we're dealing with certain kinds of symptoms that are disrupt or describing that there is a severe disruption in terms of nerve function. And this isn't always going to be an issue of broken bones or instabilities. This can be where you've got significant disc damage. This can be where you have a significant amount of inflammation. And what it's essentially doing is it's starting to choke off the, the normal nerve supply from brain to the rest of the body or vice versa. And this is gonna be different from what's going on from a general chiropractic or a physical therapy standpoint. In those cases, we're talking about things that are impeding normal nerve function. And now what we're talking about is where there is overt compression, where things are not firing at all. So what are some of these signs and symptoms? The first one is gonna be anesthesia. That is, you can't feel some part of your body, whether it's the hand, whether it's the face, 
whether it is the legs. It means that sensory messages are getting blocked off. Even more pronounced is going to be paralysis. This is where you are simply got so much weakness. Muscles are not moving the way that they are supposed to at all. And I'll hit on that there's a bit of a difference between a, a weakness and a paralysis, but also an anesthesia, what's known as a paresthesia. Paresthesia is going to be an altered sensation. This is going to be tingling. This can be burning. And these aren't necessarily good things, but in and of themselves, that doesn't mean it's surgery immediately. It's more a matter of where you cannot feel things anymore or where it just keeps going down and down and down despite doing all of the, the normal types of treatment. And the exact same thing goes with muscle weakness. It can also be if you start to notice that you're developing contractures, tightening of certain muscles where it's not moving properly. Now, this doesn't always mean that it's going to be a surgical case, but this means that you're dealing with some kind of a central motor lesion. This is not going to be uncommon with people with uh, Parkinson's. If a person is experiencing a stroke and the muscle starts to tighten to this point, same thing. We're talking about medical emergency in those circumstances. Another one would be if a person is describing very severe, very sudden symptoms that have come out of nowhere, particularly if it's involving swallowing, speech, eye movements, or any other body movement. Again, medical emergency, you got to jump into that right away. And sometimes when you do have a CT and an MRI, even then, the test will say, no, we don't see anything that's going on. You've got to rule that out first and foremost, and then try to figure out what could also be going on. But there's another one. This is where if you are noticing that you have a loss of bowel or bladder function, this is where there can be a compression of the nerves that are supplying your organs, heart, lungs, digestive, reproductive system. And this, again, very, very dangerous, particularly something that's known as a cauda equina syndrome. This is where you are getting numbness around the groin area, and it's where there is a loss of bowel bladder function. Oftentimes people, they already know that they have disc damage, they've got osteoarthritis, they've probably been working with a chiropractor physical therapist. But what I'm saying is that if it ever goes sour to where you start noticing those, that is a medical emergency and should not be uh, put off at all, immediate action. Now the last category. This is where you have simply put, you've exhausted all of the conservative options. You've been to the chiropractor, you've been to the physical therapist, you've had the massage therapy, you've been to the osteopath, you've had the acupuncture, you have done all of the right things. And yet the problem is still getting worse and worse and worse over that period of time. That is probably where you do need to consider surgery as an option. And again, when we're taking out the medical emergency kinds of conditions, the best surgeons who I've ever encountered, they're the ones who say, you know, honestly, I don't want to do this for you as a first option. They want you to do all of the, the natural conservative approaches first. But if they say, nope, you've done everything that you possibly can, and you've ruled out all of the other different factors there, then yes, this is probably going to be the most appropriate procedure to do at that particular time. So it's that going down, you're doing the right things, not getting the breakthrough that you're looking for. That's when you may want to consider having to up the ante to orthopedic neurosurgery, different kinds of things like that. Now I should also hit on that, that for any conservative option that you do, or even surgery for that matter, this is what I would say is that it's essential that you give things a good proper fair go for six to 12 weeks. Anything that you ever do for your health well-being, I don't care if it's diet, exercise, chiropractic, surgery, physical therapy, exercise, nutrition, the full gamut of things, you've got to give it a fair go because it can sometimes take 6 to 12 weeks just to see functional changes. If you're like, oh, I tried two or three treatments and that didn't work, honestly, you didn't give it a fair go. You've got to give your body the opportunity to reverse the negative momentum, start to make the changes, because if your body's essentially been a runaway freight train for 20 to 30 years, it's not reasonable to expect that all of that's going to be gone in just two to three weeks. But it does have to be clear within six to 12 weeks that you are going in the right direction. You could otherwise be doing the right thing, but in the wrong order. But again, if you haven't given it that fair go, 
then you know it's not being reasonable expecting you know a magic snap of the fingers hallelujah it's all gone you got to give everything a fair go for six to twelve weeks so there we go four types of categories things where we're thinking now the conservative approach is not going to be the right thing to do and we got to up the ante to surgery and this is also important one of the ones that i didn't really mention in this uh, particular conversation is the, the medication side of the equation it's not a good idea, in my opinion, to be just taking medication for the entire rest of your life, and that's just how you are getting through. But there's a time and a place for it. And that is if you're dealing with very debilitating kind of conditions and you're in a waiting pattern, you need to be taking a certain kind of medication so that you can find out what the underlying issue is, so that you can get that resolved and then if you do need medication on the other side of that it be as less as is humanly possible in other words fewer number of prescriptions lower dosage all of that goes towards staying as well and healthy as possibly can again there are limitations of matter we are after all only physically human and so our body can only take so much stress before you know what, this one's beyond the normal healing forces in nature. We need to use our technology, use our medical science a little bit to help things out so that things can be doing better on the other side. You're able to enjoy the best and highest quality of life that you can. So thank everybody for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please do click the like and subscribe button. If you've got friends, family, clients, and colleagues you think would be benefiting from watching this video, please share this with them. And if you want to find any more information, you can check out our clinic website, clearchirospokane.com, where we've got links to all other kinds of articles, all other kinds of blogs, conditions related to the upper neck that we may be able to help with. And if you want to find a practitioner in your area, not in the Pacific Northwest, then you can check out a directory, UCC, near me, find a specialist near you. Thanks again. This is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna at Clear Chiropractic Spokane. Get well, live well, stay well.